Okay, so I wanted to uh, talk about existence proofs. And before I get into existence proofs, I wanted to talk a little bit about, remind you about um, how a lot of the proofs that we've looked at so far are really about the universal quantifier, about for all, and contrast that with proofs that are about the ex existential quantifier or there exists. So uh, let's see where that gets us. So first of all, as I mentioned before, most implications that we look at have implicit universal quantifiers. Uh, so an example here is this theorem. If a function f from the real numbers to the real numbers is differentiable, it is continuous. So here there's an in implicit universal quantifier. The, um, the theorem really says for all functions f in the real numbers, from the real numbers to the real numbers, to f is differentiable implies f is continuous. So we're making it, we're trying to prove something about every function in a particular set of functions. Here's another example um, from linear algebra. An n by n matrix A with real entries is invertible if and only if its determinant is not zero. So again, here we're saying for all n by n matrices A with real entries, A is invertible if and only if its determinant is not zero. So theorems about the existential quantifier are different. So an, an existence theorem claims that something exists with particular properties. And usually to prove an existence theorem, you have to present in some way an example of an object with those properties. So here's a concrete, there's other examples in the book. This is a concrete example. I mean, the typical case of an existence theorem, very common one, is to say that a particular equation has a solution, right? You're asserting that there exists values of the variables which make the equation true. And here's an example of that. So first we need a definition. Uh, a Pythagorean triple is a triple of natural numbers with the property that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And the theorem is that a Pythagorean triple exists. So suppose a is 3, b is 4, and c is 5. Then c squared is 25, and that's 9 plus 16, which is a squared plus b squared. So Pythagorean triple exists. Of course, it's not the only Pythagorean triple. There are lots of others. In fact, there are infinitely others, infinitely many others. But to satisfy the conditions of an existence theorem, you just have to find one. And we did. But I don't want to downplay the fact that this can be extremely complicated in, in practice. Uh, sometimes existence claims are very deep. Here's one. Uh, so that, again, it just looks like an equation. There exist natural numbers a, b, and c, so that a over b plus c plus b over a plus c plus c over a plus b equals 4. So I challenge you to go out and find solutions to this equation. Uh, you might come to the conclusion that there aren't any. But um, in fact, there are. The smallest solution to those equations is given by these three natural numbers. They are pretty big, as you can see. In fact, I had to use extra small type because I couldn't get them to fit on the slide. So these three numbers satisfy that equation, and they're the smallest ones that work. And finding them requires you to know something about the theory. You can't just find these numbers by messing around. Uh, and so there can be hidden depths in these uh, simple equations and existence problems. And I, just as a concluding remark, um, I have the, the Clay Foundation announced a set of million dollar pro prize problems in the year 2000 in honor of the millennium. Uh, I include a link to this in the, on the Husky CT site, or you can just Google millennium problems and you'll find them. And one of the Millennium Problems is called the Navier-Stokes Problem. And the, the, the thing that's worth a million dollars is to show that there exist solutions to this Navier-Stokes equation, which is a partial differential equation that governs fluid flow. And you have to prove under general conditions that this equation always has solutions. And it's unsolved, and it's worth a million dollars. So I include this as an example just to show you that um, the... Uh, the problem of proving the existence of things is can be a very profound one. In a little addendum to this video, which you'll find on the Husky CT site, I make a few points about what happens if you want to prove that something doesn't exist. So um, check that out.